Geeks Not Nerds. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince! Vince, today we're going to talk about the new 52. Or wait. Yeah, it's that way for you. Uh, today we're going to run down, we're going to run down several issues that Vince and I both read, and uh, we're going to give you our quick impressions of of, of them, and uh, hopefully that'll kind of give you an idea of our impression overall of the 52. And then uh, later on this week, we're also going to be putting out a podcast of uh, half an hour of us talking about 52 as a whole, and uh, how, how we how we the impact we feel that it's having now and in the future um, on the comic industry. The new 52. Here we go. Okay, so uh, Vince, uh, how many uh, approximately what percentage of the 52 did you read? Oh, I read about half, maybe a little more. Yeah, and I've read probably 70%, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a few titles that I skipped here and there, just, you know, you know because of time. Uh, so, the, this is not going to uh, be it's indicative of, 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 of everything we read, and these are, again, specifically the issues that Vince and I both read, because I read some you didn't, and you read some that I didn't. Did you read Red Lanterns? Uh, no. Oh. I enjoyed Red Lanterns. I've never read a thing by Peter Milligan that I liked. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> so, well, see, the thing is, I don't care about Green Lantern, but I really liked Red Lanterns. I don't know why, but I really... Anyway, whatever. Uh, so, I just want to throw that out there right now. Uh, Red Lanterns, I really enjoyed that. Anyway, um, I have reviewed all of these on um, my comic book review show. Vince hasn't had a chance to say a lot about them, so um, I'm going to let Vince do a lot more of the talking, since a lot of you guys have probably heard me talk about these already. We'll try to move pretty quickly, anyway. Yeah, so uh, here we go. Uh, first up, and these are pretty much in no particular order, uh, but we should probably start with Justice League. Here's Justice League number one. Uh, Vince, Justice League number one. You know, I liked. I think Justice League number one is All Star Batman and Robin done properly. If that done properly. Sense. Yeah. Because a lot of people have been complaining that there's too much All Star in this. You know, the difference between this and All Star Batman and Robin is that uh, Superman is the uh, most extremely good superhero there is out there, and everybody's stupid. Well, Frank Miller made everybody bad. Like, just bad at being a superhero. This guy, uh, Jeff Johns, rather, he, he did well. He made all of the superheroes effective superheroes, and Batman is still effective. Why? Read the book and find out. It's, it's like, if I think if you want to add a 52 Bat book, I think Justice League might be where it's at. I think it's a good starting place. I'm not sure how much I'm going to love it as it continues on in the direction that it's going. I'm curious. I don't know. I hope it goes somewhere. Um, I, I do have to say that I like uh, uh, Lee's art more than I like John's writing on this book. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I will I will say that, and I think part of that is just I mean the, the dynamic between Batman and Green Lantern is fun, mm -hmm. but I think part of the problem is that, that he, he's he's overcompensating with banter to make a, a book that is otherwise dark fun. Because mm -hmm. I didn't get this dark feeling about it until I read it the second time when I was like, oh, so the new Fifty Two is this universe where everyone hates superheroes, kind of like Civil War, uh, only better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, certainly better, but more modernized than I personally would like. Uh, I don't need my superheroes to be ultra realistic, and that's and I'm fine with it. So I think that's a taste difference, but fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but uh, story wise and all that, it, yeah, it's it's fine. I will say it feels a little set up, and it might be going to where they're just fighting each other, and that's it, until they decide that they need to work together. So I don't know where it's going to go, but number one's okay. Hopefully, the dark side coming in will get more than that. Uh, but all right. Well, uh, here's Aquaman number one. Once again, no particular order. Why well, have you? <laughs> Should we just do it? God, this is a good book. Okay. <laughs> it was great. Uh, I think it's so good because you don't expect it to be good. You know what I mean? You expect it to be Aquamanian. It really I'm is... gonna go. You expect it to be um 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 awkward man. Here's, here's, here's awkward. The, here's the, that was that was that was our word. Wasn't it? <laughs> here's the thing, Vince. Um, I'm gonna go as far as to say. This ties for my favorite issue of the entire 52. Me too. It's it's right up there. I added it to my poll. Are I'm, you are you going to buy it? I'm totally buying it. And I wasn't going to read it. <laughs> I read it at the last minute and just went, oh, okay, I guess I'm sort of kind of curious. And it's, okay, what's it's, so great about it? Man? What's so great is that it's uh, it takes people's expectations of what Aquaman is. It says, yes, we understand how you feel about Aquaman, and we're going to apply that to the general public within the DC universe. So Aquaman is uh, trying to fight the public opinion of how he's a weakling, and uh, he's always been really effective, but nobody's ever used him in a, as a superhero in a comic book. Yeah, weakling and just dorky motif. Yeah. People so, seem to have. And then he's portrayed in such an iconic way. I mean, I've, I've known for quite a while now that Aquaman is, is more effective than what people let him be. So they put him in a team book, and they say, well, he, he, all he does is talk to fish. Well, no, he, he does more than that, and the book shows you this. It's, it's, it's not set up in the way that it's saying, this is going to go somewhere. So we start the book knowing that it's going somewhere. It's, it's great. It's, there's a story, and there's lots of humor. It's 
fantastic. Yeah, and it's bookended well with the setup for the for the bad guy plot. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, just I can't I cannot say enough good things about that book. Aquaman's great. Bat rule number one, Vince. Gil Simone's bat rule number one. Bat. I'm gonna say that it was really tedious to read it. I felt the same way. Like every time somebody would say a word, I would go, "Oh God." Can I also preface this by saying, real quick, just so that we don't get lynched? I love Gail Simone. I'm a big fan yeah. of Gail Simone. I just did, I didn't like this book, and I'm not sure I'm not sure it's her fault. Um, I, I have more premise issues with this than I have with with the, with the dialogue. Um, you know, she gets her legs back because it's a miracle, Vince. I couldn't get my head around that. And you know, did I'm that wondering. Bother you? The, it the, bothers the, me a bit. Okay. I wonder. I'm wondering if they're going to elaborate that on that later. I don't know. See, I'm I not sure. I, I'm not sure I trust it because we're getting that in some other places also. And maybe, maybe we we'll, we should touch on this in the podcast. But, um, but, but with with some other things, let me just throw this out there real quick. Um, they did the same thing with Nightwing. Now I like Nightwing. I like that book better than I like yeah. more than I like this. I don't know if you read Nightwing. I like Nightwing a lot. I, I enjoyed it, but um, I will say that they did what they did here with Nightwing going back to with with Dick Grayson going back to Nightwing in that he's he's like uh, I Bruce Wayne is is uh, taking the mantle of Batman back. And he's coming to Gotham, and now I'm going to be Nightwing. No explanation as to why. I mean, we were right in the middle of uh, of um, Batman Inc., and just all of a sudden he gets a, he gets a suit back. Now I get that it's the new Fifty Two and all that, but there, there needs to be some kind of an explanation because all that background is still there. Same thing with this. So I'm not sure how much we can trust that they're going to, ex the, 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 and how quickly we'll get an explanation. You make a good point. I think we should touch on that in the podcast because yeah, it doesn't bother me that much. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But, uh, Sorry for belaboring that one. No, that's fine. Gail Simone is a good writer. I've tried some Birds of Prey recently, and she has a terrific <laughs> sense of how, uh, how like bantering friends should work. Love her Huntress, by the way. And uh, I read the uh, the Huntress and the Question crossover in Birds of Prey. It was great. And uh, I don't understand why this is such a far cry from that. Because this is basically Batgirl stammering and being afraid to be a superhero. I don't understand why... Like, I, I get why she would have apprehensions, and I think she should have more of a physical aspect more than a, uh, a fear aspect. I don't know. She does a decent job of dealing with um, you know, the transition of getting her legs back. I mean, I guess that's the one, the one good thing I can say about it. Yeah, I mean, there is some of it in there, but... Uh, Having her be so afraid, like for example, being afraid of a gunman, that's really bizarre to me. I don't understand why this should. I... Oh, I don't know. I mean, that's that's calling back to Joker and everything. I understand, but I. She seemed like she gets into the wheelchair and she's so strong and like I'm gonna make the best of this. And you, and you don't think if she got her no. legs back she would lose that? Well, Not that's at all. fair. Yeah. Let's move on, shall we? Um, yeah. Action Comics number one. Grant Morrison back on Superman and. Let me say real quick that this is one of we have here one of the biggest freaking fans of All Star Superman. All Star is fantastic. In fact, I was missing one issue and I just bought it today. Well, congratulations. <laughs> so, how'd you feel about this? I felt that uh, Superman is kind of a brat, but that might be where Superman needs to start to actually make sense. And uh, within the universe, I guess. Good but, move uh, that we're getting early Superman and current Superman at the same time, right? Yeah, I mean. It, so we know that Superman's going to end up where he is. But early Superman, I don't know that I like him enough to keep reading the book. I know that I like Lex enough to keep reading the book. Lex is really the big thing that makes this book interesting. Whereas uh, All-Star Superman had a Superman that was more uh, sympathetic, this one has a Lex that's just so darn interesting. Uh-huh. He, he sure is. That it keeps you reading. Uh, two, two big things besides, um, besides the unpredictability of the story that will keep me on this book... Uh, is is uh, Morales' drawing, because it's just astounding, and uh, the really interesting um, use of iconic imagery. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, that's great. Anyway. Swamp Thing number one. Swamp Thing number Scott one. Snyder. Scott Snyder, yay for Scott Snyder. Yay! Uh, how did you feel about Swamp Thing? Uh, I felt like he wasn't in the book enough. <laughs> Just one thing. Number one was it was. It's good. a setup book, but there's there's not a lot of plot in it. It's kind of like saying we're coming off the tail of Brightest Day and we're coming off the tail of uh, that big Swamp Thing thing that they did after. It's a good setup book. But yeah, it's a setup. No, it's very solid. It's it's very dialogue heavy, and the and the dialogue is is very compelling. Honestly, being the first week of the Fifty Two, the thing I got the most out of this was uh, was characterization for Superman actually, because we this is the first time that we really get any dialogue at all from. From current day Superman and not non action Superman, and so um, I honestly was kind of losing the swamp thing because I was so concentrated on what is 
new Superman like, and so um, that distracted me actually from this book. Yeah, I, personally, I'd rather Superman not be in there if that makes sense. Oh, it, no, it's fine because it's a setup book and it's going to go somewhere else. I'm and sure. And it's also mainstream DC and not Vertigo, but and uh, I just I wanted. I really wanted to get a feel for how Swamp Thing's going to be, but if you really want to get a feel of how Swamp Thing's going to be, you got to wait for issue two. Granted, it's out right now. Oh, wait, I haven't even had a chance to read it yet. Me neither. Uh, but I think we do get a sense of how creepy this book has a chance of being with yeah. some of the art in this. I feel like it might be going back to some of its uh, like horror spoof roots. Well, not spoof, but homage. Uh, Tony Daniel on Detective Comics, number one. It was interestingly creepy. And that's, that's about all that I, I can pull away from it. That's too, yeah. Like, it tried to do this uh, this big love note to the whole uh, uh, Mickey Spillane uh, love note to the city thing that they do. Oh, the city's a beast, and it's it's things that you have to remember because it's the city. Oh, and you know, actually, I just remembered something. I did not review this book um, oh, yeah. before, I should say that. And I also didn't review um, Batgirl because I didn't like it. And uh, my, my show is more of a recommend show, so I didn't feel the need to bring up Batgirl because I didn't, I didn't care for it. Oh, um, yeah. This one, the same thing. I didn't, I didn't like it enough to recommend it on my show. I think the, uh, the last page, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I think the last page is, uh, m might be worth picking up both one and two. Have you read two yet? No. Okay, okay. But um, uh, I, I, I have already kind of lost interest myself. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, again, just me, just taste thing. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not caring for the, for the, for the plot thread, honestly. Yeah. The only thing in Detective Comics that I thought was interesting was the last panel, and uh, otherwise it was tedious to read. I kind of felt that too. Yeah. Uh, Batwoman. Go ahead, Vince. You have a, you have a background in Batwoman. I don't feel that Batwoman is enough of a 52 book. Interesting. I think. Uh, I think. Do you think that there are some that are too much of 52 books? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think I think sometimes they belabor the point, and uh, we can we can get to that in uh, in the, the podcast. podcast. Yeah. Oh, how much have we, how much have we got left here? One, two, three. Oh, quite a, uh, four. Four. We'll knock these four out really quick, shall we? But uh, Batwoman was uh, has too much of Detective Comics and some of her other uh, uh, mini shots that she was in the other series. So it's really it, there needs to be more explanation than what you get from that, or even Batwoman Zero. I thought that too. I thought it required way too much prior reading for being um, a, a 52 book where the mantra seems to be anybody can pick these up and read them. Uh, there, are, there, are a few, there are a few like that. And I think part of the problem is, and again, we'll talk about this later, but I, I, but I, think, I think part of the problem is that I'm pretty sure this book was done before 52 was even announced. Me too. Well, you know, it's not even that it's uh, that it's hard to read because there are certain things that I'm pretty certain you're going to get into issue two, and sure. everything's going to be explained away, and you're going to get it. But uh, yeah, but if you're not a person interested in this, you yeah. have to get to. See, the reason you should care about this book was printed in Detective Comics. So <laughs> that's the and, reason. And I just thought that Zero was a vastly superior book. Yeah. Well, it's in hardly even connected, so it's. That's what I liked about it's it. A, it's a one-shot, and this is a series, the, the opening of a series. Anyway. Resurrection Man number one! Uh, one of my favorite books in the New 52. I just have to say that because no one, nobody but me is talking about this book. I love Resurrection Man. Go ahead, Vance. What did you think of it? Uh, Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning are so hit and miss with me. <laughs> okay. There's, like, I've been reading some old Punisher recently, and they've been doing a lot of, they did a lot of that Do stuff. they always team on? Uh, usually. Oh, I didn't know that. They okay. did, uh, oh, I think they did a lot of Punisher 2099, so I might be wrong about that. Haven't read it? Don't kill me. But, uh, they, they've Just, done... Hold on, hold on, moment of silence. Something Punisher admits hasn't read. <gasps> well, I have a lot of boxes that I haven't read yet. Oh, okay, okay. okay. The, they did it. They did a story arc that was awful, and then they did a story arc that was fantastic. So they're really hit and miss. And it was like one right next. Okay, to but the what do you think of this? This is uh, somewhere in between. All right. I, it was very. I thought it was okay. I, I, I wasn't as jazzed about it as Cap here is. Well, but yeah, but that's because I know Resurrection Man. That's that's the difference. I mean, for me, it, it's. Okay, I think that this is a really good um, uh, place in the middle between the. Too much of a 52 and not enough of a 52? Yeah, that's a good point. Where, where I don't... Fe now, it's hard to say this because I've read the, uh, the, the other Resurrection Man issues uh, from the 90s, but it felt to me like a book that you didn't have to have the old stuff, but if you did know it, it doesn't feel like a 52 book because it starts right where they left off. You know, I felt like uh, they give us plenty of reason to care that there are these, uh, this mixing of the afterlife and uh, the current life, whatever you call that, more mortal plane. Yes. But uh, they don't know before afterlife. I don't feel like there's enough reason in the book to care about Resurrection Man in relation to the afterlife. 
Okay. If that makes sense? Fair criticism. So it's good, but it's not... It, I don't care at this moment. Okay. But would you agree that it's at least picking up for the airplane scene? <laughs> the airplane scene was good. I thought the depressurization <laughs> was funny. Yeah, yeah, it was. Considering that's hardly realistic. Yeah, I'd... Ask me a figure. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't. Batman number one, Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo. Uh, the, the big one I was holding out for. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Uh, I was a little let down by it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fair. I mean, for it's, what reason? No, it wasn't bad. All right. It was a. It was another one of those books where they kept talking about uh, the city. They did that in a lot of the Bat books. But uh, yeah, it, they did it in all of the Bat books. Yeah, I think uh, Batman was in a title in in the fifty two. It it opened with Gotham City. Yeah, it has a soul. I think yeah, Batman and Nightwing were the best ones, but uh, that talked about the city, considering Nightwing didn't belabor it so much. But. Uh, by Can the, I also say though? I'm sorry, but but the the thing is though, I give Snyder a pass on it. Not just because he's Snyder, but because that's been a that's been a big theme for him all the way through Detective into this, mm -hmm. and this is really picking up where Detective left off. Like, I know it's supposed to be a reboot, but Snyder didn't get the memo, and that's <laughs> fine with me. Um, well, well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that. All of, it's confusing. Most of the Batman continuity seems to be the same. Um, the, you wouldn't know this because you didn't read Detective, I don't think, no. but um, there are a couple of um, nice little Easter eggs about his run of Detective in here, where, it, where it, it's very... This is a much more poignant book if you know his, his prior work on Batman because of the differences in the juxtaposition between how he writes Dick Grayson and how he writes Bruce Wayne. Um, mm -hmm. It's a better book than you realize, but you got to read Detective to know that. Yeah, I, I suppose it's fair. Maybe I just don't have enough... So it might be one of those 52 books that's not 52 enough. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, that's that's a fair criticism. Uh, me being a fan of Snyder's work, I really loved it. I can understand why you would be let down if you if you, if you didn't have that background. Less happened in, in uh, Swamp Thing 1, and I was more engaged by Swamp Thing 1. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, Catwoman 1. The infamous now Catwoman number 1, uh, with the, with the uh, final three pages that nobody can stop talking about. What do you think? Uh, I thought they were just trying to sell sex a little too much. And, uh, well, you know, fair enough, it sells, and uh, it's not grotesque enough that you can't let somebody that's a little, like a teenager, read it. I mean, second page, and they're yeah. already... There's... <laughs> and technically, we're not showing anything grotesque. No, so. no, no, nothing grotesque. Or, or not grotesque, but you know what I mean. It yes. needs to be censored. Yes, Catwoman partially nude is grotesque now. She's, she has, like, you know, bullet wounds and uh, you... monsters coming out of her... Do you think Judd Winnick has a good track record? I think Judd Winnick, Winnick has done some good stuff, and I think he's, uh... I liked his, uh... What do you call that? I liked his Outsiders a lot. I, I never read that. And, uh, it got a little bogged down by all the stuff that was going on when, uh, Outsiders was happening, but, uh, his early Outsiders was, was pretty good, and that's the thing, is I can't, I can't really judge him, because sometimes it's hit and miss, and I can't really say whether or not it's, he's bogged down. Like, he doesn't do well in an event, I don't think. I like his characterization of Catwoman a lot. Um, I think that, that that she she is she is very much the Catwoman we know, and, yeah. and and I like that. And I like I like the situation she's in at the at the beginning. I, I like I like how she handles it. Um, I like that she, her house blows up and she doesn't freak out. I mean, I really I really like that. Um, I don't like the fact that she and Bruce Wayne don't know who each other are. Yeah. That bothers me. It doesn't bother me too much, or at least it bothers me not knowing what time period this book's in. There's, I, I think maybe this 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 book takes place in the past, and if it does, then it's not a problem. But I, I hope you know that soon, because otherwise, it seems to be the one big thing in Batman mythos that has been changed, and I don't get that. You know, I'm going to tell you exactly why it doesn't bother me too All much. Right. I'm not going to keep reading the book, and uh, <laughs> it's it's not interesting enough for me to keep going. I mean, it's okay, okay but if, if I you... I am, and can I tell you why? Go for it. Two words. Gillen Marsh, who is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite artists. Um, and, and, and not just because it's Gillen Marsh. It's not just that I would read any book, regardless of how good it was, if Gillen Marsh was right. It's Gillen Marsh drawing Catwoman again. That's a big deal for me. Because he was he was doing uh, Gotham City Sirens, which I really, really enjoyed. And um, getting getting to see him draw Catwoman again is kind of a big thing for me. So um, it's good enough that, I mean, you know, if it was... If, if I found the writing reprehensible, maybe I wouldn't read it. But it's at least good enough that I will buy it for his artwork, so. And finally, uh, Static Shock number one. Which I'll let you talk about because um, I really uh, didn't, I didn't even finish it. I, got, I, I, I have not even finished this book, so go ahead. Uh, Static Shock number one, it's, it's, not a, it's, it's enough of a 52 book to know that you don't have to have read everything that came beforehand. Especially since there's not that much to read. But uh, it's, 
The only real interesting thing about him is that hardware is backing him. And, or the character hardware. I think that's his name. Right? I don't know. There's, there's a superhero out there who is funding Static Shock's superheroism. So, that's interesting. And it's nice to know that there's a pupil superhero out there. That's interesting. Who's not a sidekick, he's just kind of a superhero in training who's, you know, working at the same time. But it's, it's not interesting enough. It's, it's very much so the TV series where they say, look, I'm the hip urban superhero who's not really urban. Yeah, well, he is not... Is, one, one big criticism I heard was just he's not riding around on a trash can lid, and that bothers people. <laughs> um, that, that he's got this, like, he's got this souped-up apparatus. And, but I guess if he's got somebody funding him, it makes, it makes sense. But yeah, the biggest criticism I've heard of it, and, and again, I didn't, I didn't read it, but um, it, it, is, it was, was just... I think, I think Eric said this uh, when I talked to him on the phone the other day, that it wasn't uh, static shock enough. Like not like like all the elements were sort of kind of there, but then it was missing things. So I don't know. Uh, I don't. I just don't think it's like feasible. He's in a high school now, and all the kids are annoying, and he's annoying. They're all stereotypes of teenagers. They're not real. They're just what you would see on the WB. Well, Vince, we're well out of time. Yeah. Uh, so that's our that, that's a spattering of uh, our our quick opinions on uh, some of the issues we both read of the Fifty Two. And stay tuned uh, for a podcast later on in a couple days uh, about more of the Fifty Two. And if you have anything you'd like us to talk about in a future video, be sure to leave those ideas in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Captain Logan, and I'm Vince, reminding you to support your local comic book stores. Thanks again. See you later. Mr. Owl. One, a two! It's a street! My beak! <laughs>